Hey, it's been a while since I have shared my Notion workspace with you, and I wanted to give you a very quick high level overview of some of the changes that I've made in the last couple months so that you get a sense of how things are set up in my workspace and how I manage the shared team assets alongside of my own private personal goals and tasks and that sort of thing. So here I'm on Marie HQ, which is a private page. So this is really my homepage. It's got my commitments here, my goals, my areas. So you'll see here I have this areas gallery and this is the only time that I use areas as a gallery. You might have seen my other uh, para video. So how I use the projects, areas, resources, archives, way of organizing my space. I take a lot of liberties with para so I don't use it literally uh, exactly the way Tiago does. And so I will um, elaborate on that a little bit. But essentially, these areas are my own personal areas. They're not the business's areas. So as you can see, mind, body, spirit, advocacy, relationships, permaculture, this is all stuff that is uh, unique to me. And in some cases, when I open up some of these, I will link out to shared our shared projects uh, database. So I have a mix of private stuff and shared stuff inside of these areas. Permaculture, for example, is something that's only, uh, it's only my stuff. So these are links that live right inside of this page. But with something like house and home that I share with my husband, we both have access to the Okie Dokie workspace. So these are links to pages that are shared inside of our Okie Dokie areas. Here I bring in the projects database and I filter it by uh, home and garden. So this project's database contains everything personal and private, but I just filter it in the way that I need it. And I just, I like the gallery view. So I like to pull this in and have this be sort of an inspirational visual area. All of my planning is here. So my daily journal, weekly agenda, all of this stuff is, uh, lives inside my own private Marie HQ page. And same with the alignment and all that stuff. Like this is stuff that the team doesn't really need to see or other uh, other people don't need to see. It's just for my own personal uh, planning and alignment and goal setting. And then I also embed my goals here as well. Uh, this goals actually lives inside of my planning dashboard, but I just re-embed it here as well. Um, I like the, uh, the little progress tracker and then being able to see what category things are. Like I just love the visual aspect of it. So I just pull in those databases, same with my month database and my quarterly database. I pull that stuff in so I can at a glance really look and see what my, my goals are, my own projects here. So again, this is a shared database from the Okie Dokie workspace, which I'll show you. And I've just embedded that here and filtered it by anything that's assigned to me and the area does not contain client. So these are sort of my own self-directed projects. And as I scroll down, there's more, you know, notes and ideas, knowledge hub stuff, but this is generally, generally speaking, um, I do a lot of that other stuff elsewhere, but it's all here as a snapshot, just in case I ever want to access it quickly. In terms of the changes for the workspace, so the Okie Dokie page looks fairly similar. There are a couple adjustments. Uh, the main thing is that each of these areas on the side here um, are not databases, they're pages now. So even projects is a page that has the original database embedded in it several times. Um, so here, for example, I can see the projects by size, by type, or ongoing, maybe I only wanna see the projects that we have ongoing by category. So it gives us a couple different options. I think I typically have it on uh, by type. And then our actions are here. So this is just kind of like a snapshot of projects and tasks all in one go. And there's a little size legend here. So small projects, medium projects, um, just to help kind of differentiate of um, how those might be categorized here. Lots of project templates in here as well. Resources is also a page, not a database. So there's a number of different databases inside of the resources. And anything that is a solid circle here is a database. Anything that is open is a page. And dashboards are anything with this icon here. Um, a dashboard usually means that there's a number of different databases and pages kind of mixed together. And uh, it's, it's usually to deal with a specific context. So learning is gonna pull in my knowledge hub in different ways and even my notes and ideas 
uh, etc. You'll notice that now I have dashboards in the left hand side as well. Um, more and more dashboards has become a bigger part of my workspace and so I decided that it needs its own area here. And so there's you know planning related dashboards, content related dashboards, and then these that are a little bit more on the resource side of things, you know, learning and ideation, inspiration, and then our metrics uh, trackers, which are related to the okie dokie fulfillment area here. So I consider these are areas, fulfillment, operations, growth, and marketing. They're really sort of high level categories, but each of these is actually a dashboard. So fulfillment is a dashboard that has the sales database, client information, products and service information. So it kind of pulls together all of that information into one page. Same with operations, everything related to operations, tools, the team, how we work, our SOPs, everything is inside of operations. For growth and marketing, it's again, the same thing. It's gonna to pull together our case studies, affiliate links, all of this is uh, something that you can find inside of growth and marketing. Uh, except for Content Hub, for example, because that is its own, um, that's its own database or that's its own dashboard rather there's quite a few different uh, databases inside of the content hub so if i click under operations for example you're going to see the team sops and tools are all here inside of this page so here's the team here's all of our sops these get updated pretty frequently anytime there's a new one we will just add a new one here and uh, all of the how-to information is in there our bookkeeping, for example, we have a whole process around that and uh, template for that. So anything that you keep doing over and over again, you definitely want to make uh, an SOP for that. We've got our tools here as well, organized by must haves and highly recommend and then the frequency of use as well. Uh, I think we have a gallery view of this as well, but don't have cover images for all of them, um, but just kind of shows you the tools that we use and then inside of some of those entries too, there might be more direction in terms of um, how to use this or what you might need to know about it. We could integrate and connect our SOPs uh, and actually drop in some of these SOPs right inside of those tools as well and reference them. And then we have our roles and responsibilities. This is just using Whimsical and it's embedded in here which is good fun. And so this just kind of gives us a snapshot of the operations of the company it's a pretty tiny team, just the three, four of us. And, uh, and I do recommend, you know, for if you, if you have a team greater than a few, it's going to be important for you to uh, set up a database of all of your team members as well. And then you might even want to connect up your projects and tasks to specific uh, teams. So let's say you have an engineering team or a design team, you might want to connect your folks to the team and then assign certain projects to certain teams. So uh, we'll cover more of the business use cases in future videos, but this one is just kind of a high level tour of some of the changes that I've made in my space and how I think about it. Now, because each of these pages and dashboards are pretty unique, uh, they're quite separate, right? So how I use the content hub is very different than the SOPs. So I didn't want to put all of these pages inside of a database of areas. So I still think of this as areas, but I just, I don't really call it that. I just call it the company name. Um, and the, I just think of these and I sort of color code them. So purple is fulfillment, orange is operations, green is growth and marketing. Uh, and then this is sort of like day-to-day -day action. And those are some of the major, major changes and sort of way that I have been thinking about my space and thinking of things much more as dashboards. Like I very rarely these days will go and click on an individual uh, database. So sales, I, I very rarely click on sales. I would be more inclined to click on fulfillment and look at the bigger picture of the sales compared to goals and everything together. So. Um, I lean more toward making these much more in-depth and useful dashboards for myself. So you can see I've got a few here like focus, collect and process, connect. Um, if I go to collect and process, um, this is where every day I try and clear this out. And my inbox is, uh, again, it's a database that lives inside of the resource area. Uh, and this is empty here because as soon as something new gets added here, uh, by the end of the day, I open that up, I 
decide what I need to do with it. If I need to assign it to, uh, you know, read it later, or I want to process it, turn it into a court, whatever it looks like, I drag those items from the inbox either into a note or idea or into the knowledge hub. And then I assign metadata to it, I tag it, and uh, then it disappears from here. So this is just for collecting and processing. And as I do that processing, as I summarize the articles, as I give them tags, they disappear from this area. So the idea is every day at the end of every day and at the end of every week certainly is to get this cleared out. So you don't have all that nagging stuff kind of waiting for you um, that hasn't been processed yet. So uh, this one, for example, has been processed and I'm gonna give that a status of reference and then it, it will disappear here from the Knowledge Hub. So I've been really relying on these different databases to get focused, to do my collection and processing, to connect with people, uh, to set my goals, focus on my learning. And um, I've done a separate video on uh, the learning database as well, which I will post in a separate video, but just wanted to give you a sense of how things have evolved and changed. And I find it a lot cleaner, a lot easier to use. I know exactly where everything is. And uh, really this is at the core of the databases here. So I've got my uh, private pages here, super easy to navigate. This is pretty much everything here can be tucked into one of these categories. So my gardening stuff is in here. Any house and home stuff is related there, but I can also access it from our shared space here. So I've got our garden stuff and our household stuff, because again, this is stuff that um, Ben can also see as well. And so he can uh, click on any of this and access it very, very quickly. So I hope that helps. Uh, give a bit of an overview and explain kind of how some of those things are connected. There's definitely a lot of nuances. And, um, you know, as, as you go into some of these pages, there's a lot more happening as well. And some of these are a little bit more like dashboards, but I just wanted to give you a bit of a tour, show you what has been updated. And, um, you know, hopefully that inspires you as you think about how you might want to organize your space. Obviously Notion is, uh, there's so many different ways you can set up your stuff. There's no rules really, uh, but I have found that Para, the Projects, Areas, Resources, Archives, is a really good starting point. And then you really gotta take it and run with it and uh, not kind of stick to hardline because with Notion, your data doesn't have to live in one place. So I don't worry too much about uh, thinking of things like a file folder structure. You know, the same database actually appears in several places. So uh, the sales database might also appear inside the courses, but filtered only to show course sales and things like that. Content Hub is also gonna um, contain my notes and ideas uh, as well as potentially uh, Knowledge Hub stuff in there too. So lots of databases actually appear in multiple places in my workspace and it's just a way for me to not forget what is uh, most important and what's what needs to stay top of mind. So hope that you enjoyed this tour. Definitely let me know if there's anything you wanna see me cover in more detail. I'm going to dive in a little bit more detail into uh, some of these key dashboards that I've been using, but I'd love to hear from you. If there's something specific you're not sure about, not sure how to do, want to see me cover in more detail, definitely leave me a comment below and I will do my best to cover that for you. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.